How you doing, dear? Hi, how are you? I'm doing fine. What's your name? My name's Allie, and I'm from uh, Marlton, New Jersey. Yo, shout out Jersey, we <laughs> out I'm, there. I'm 30 years old. Oh, okay. Yeah. How long have you been down in Kensington now? Um, so I've been homeless in Kensington for four, a little over four years now. Um, but I've been coming down here um, this run for a little over eight years straight. I've been on this run using, and I use um, fentanyl with a drink and um, uh, crack. Those are my two drugs of choice. How were you introduced to those drugs? Um, so I guess when I was like 16, 17, I started, you know, uh, hanging out with people that were a little bit older than me. Um, you know, they didn't really influence it or anything. They were just doing it. I chose to, you know, use, uh, started smoking weed and then started using perks. Uh, got too expensive. And then it went to dope, um, the brown heroin. And then obviously they don't, you know, really sell that anymore. It's all fentanyl and, and tranquilizer now. But yeah, um, I guess I started, yeah, when I was around 20 years old. Um, just really just, I guess, hanging out with the wrong people, you know? But I can't blame them for my you know, me using, because I chose to use and to keep using, uh, I guess because I liked the way it made me feel, you know? It kind of numbed everything. Do you have family out here? In Philly? No. Um, I have some uh, aunts and uncles and cousins on my dad's side um, in Pennsylvania, but uh, my other family is from Jersey. Do they know about your addiction? Uh, yeah, they do now. Um, oh, they maybe not every single one, um, but yeah. It took them a little while to, to realize, to catch on, though. What happened when they found out you was addicted? How did they react? So, yeah, I was using when I was younger. Um, they obviously were against drugs. Uh, my, my family doesn't use any drugs. Um, you know, my dad was big uh, on, you know, trying to prevent me and my sisters from going down this road. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm the odd one out and I was the addict in the family. Um, <laughs> I don't know. How many siblings do you have? Um, I have two sisters. They're both older. And yeah, like I said, they don't use drugs. Um, but yeah, uh, when my family found out that I was using, um, it was because I was getting arrested and I ended up on probation for a couple years in New Jersey when I was younger. Um, probably once I turned 18, honestly, I got put on probation. And then around age 21, I violated my probation I got arrested with a bag of heroin and I was facing three years um, prison or three years drug court probation and I took the drug court probation and I was I didn't want to get clean but I was forced to get clean um, I didn't want to go to prison you know so um, they threw me in jail when I was 21 from there they put me into um, a rehab, a short-term 30-day at Maryville in New Jersey. Um, and when I got out, I stayed clean. I stayed clean for about three years. Um, I couldn't drink, I couldn't smoke, I couldn't take any prescription medicine that I, you know, had been prescribed before. Um, and it was, it, life was good. I had it, um, and then I had my baby when I was, uh, when I was clean, I got pregnant and I had him and I can say that I had him um, clean and not when I was using drugs. Um, so I ended up doing the drug court for three years. Um, it was hard, it was really hard. They make you do a lot of things, they're really on your ass. Um, you really can't slip up at all. Um, but I graduated that after three years um, I graduated when I was, I guess, 
around 23. Uh, so I graduated a little early, from like around age 20, 21 to 23 I was on. And then basically once I graduated and I didn't have somebody over my shoulder drug testing me, um, I started using again. I don't know why I started using again. I guess me and my ex, my son's father, he's now passed away. He passed away uh, about a year ago in overdose. So my son now only has me and obviously I'm out here homeless in Kensington using drugs. And so he doesn't have me right now. He's, you know, being well taken care of, but not by his mom. Yeah, no, I guess me and him just uh, decided to, you know, do it one time, we said, you know, and then we did it the next day, and, you know, like I said earlier, nobody ever told me that if I were to use opiates for two or three days in a row, that now I'm physically and mentally addicted and the physical is what kills me. The, the physical sickness, the headaches, the cold sweats, the um, throwing up, the, the aches and pains, the restless legs, all of that. Um, it's hell. It's probably the absolute worst sickness besides cancer. You know, I don't wish it upon anybody, not even my worst enemy, to go through um, withdrawing from drugs and it's it's not fun it it hasn't been fun in a while it's I'm forced to buy it every day you know like I can't even get up and function until I get well you know you, you can't do anything you can't plan to go anywhere or do anything it's hard to even try to have a job you know, because you don't know if you're gonna have enough uh, to stay well, to get through, you know, either that job or, you know, your family party or can't go on vacation. I can't tell you the last time that I went to the beach even, or even put a bathing suit on because of the marks all over my body, you know, and, and it's, it sucks. You know, you really, uh, you're, you're kind of stuck. I can't even really leave Kensington for that long, you know, unless I, ha I have enough to take with me. And then the whole time I'm thinking, I just want to get back. I need to get back. You know, it's, it's a tough lifestyle, right? <clears throat> yeah, it's really tough. It's a full-time job. It is, to... it is. It's like, you can hardly sleep constantly you need to make sure you have money or have drugs to stay well it doesn't you know every couple hours maybe every two three hours you need to do more and more and it's not just oh, like this car go by right <laughs> some music. go ahead it's not easy so so in in 24 hours how many bags do you need to stay well uh so my this whole course my of this like eight year run um i guess the amount that i've been doing is up and down and it really depends how much money i have okay. to be completely honest with you right. i can blow through $200 worth of dope in the same amount of time that I can make $20 last me. What do you do for work? Um, so I make money by unfortunately doing dates um, out here. Uh, I also will boost when I can. Um, pretty much any kind of um, hustle I can get besides robbing, you know, other people out here. I don't I don't agree with that. I think, you know, all these 
all those addicts out here should be like helping each other rather than stealing from each other you know um there's a, on the good side there is plenty of ways to make money out here like what um i mean panhandling uh girls doing dates boosting um working at the blocks um whether you're selling or being a lookout or um just you know like flipping things like that other people have boosted or they donate whatever like there's just there's plenty of ways to make money and i guess that's also something that is like um what is that word fucking um what's the word i'm looking for when people are like i don't want to um like it basically helps them to to keep using drugs because there's so many ways to make money like all like if there wasn't so many ways to make money and it was a lot harder i'm not gonna say it's not hard to make money out here you know what i mean everybody's struggling to get by but if it wasn't if we didn't have as many choices of ways to make money you know maybe there wouldn't be so many i don't know so many so many people using but yeah like we said there's this big u-haul building next to us and there's still all these homeless people out here where they could have made that into a shelter or something or even a safe injection site you know because you have the the kids and uh the the parents bitching when they walk you know by and and people are shooting up on the side of the street but if they had a building where you go in and you do your shot there there's people that can help you do it if you don't know how to so we're not going to get all these marks and and abscesses people there to save you if you're overdosing if you're you know and if you're caught using on the street you get arrested you know so there wouldn't be all the needles and the paraphernalia on the street you know i think that would be a good idea to just have a building you have to do it in that building Absolutely. and now the people that are against it they don't have to look at it you don't have to go in it you know, mm-hmm. but it would clean up the streets. Right, right, you're absolutely right. So let me ask you, since you've been out here, you know you do dates and that's very dangerous. Yeah. What has been your worst dating experience? Um, so I guess more so in the beginning. Um, when you first start, like, you have to, you really have to be able to le- learn how to read people, judge people you know, go with your first instincts, um, which I'm, I'm very good at now, you know, I could pretty much tell how a person is by the first few things they say to me, but in the beginning, you have to learn the hard way, and I've had a lot of bad dates, I've been, um, you know, taken places and, and left in the middle of nowhere, I've been physically, beaten, punched in the face over and over in the head. Um, I've been holding on to this truck to go by. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I've been beaten in the head multiple times. This guy tried to rape me. I had to actually um, jump out of the car and run down Lehigh Ave butt naked. Um, I've had guns pulled out on me, knives pulled out, people, um, you know, try to take the money back, try to not pay you, give you fake money, um, I've (laughs) had people, you know, that a lot of guys like to smoke crack and, uh, sometimes they, they totally change, like, they can go from being real nice to completely like psychotic i've had guys try to push me into the train tracks before (laughs) you know um the steps fucking there's some whack jobs out here there are there's some really crazy people so there's certain types of people that i will not 
you know, date, and it's <clears throat> only because they gave themselves that stereo like stereotype, you know, every time. For instance, younger people, um, it's just a lot of issues with them. But not everybody, you know, but people make it bad for everybody else. You know, there's, there's always gonna be there's one or two people that make it make it bad for for the others you know even with boosting like it, it's gotten a lot harder to boost to make money you know because the idiots just want to be dumb about it you know and and that just makes everybody else look bad and Right. It's not easy, the life that you're living. Yeah. What What's a typical day in your life look like? <laughs> Every day is the fucking same, I swear. It's literally just on repeat. And, you know, you see the same people. And they, you know, the same people begging for this and that. So, you know, I always try to save something for a wake up. Um, but then there'll be that occasional time that I'll accidentally pass out and wake up and not have anything. That's the worst when I'm sick because I, I honestly am very, very generous. I do help people out a lot. I know what it's like to be sick, you know, and I, I know if I see somebody else sick that... I, you know, I wouldn't want somebody to, you know, I would want somebody to help me. But these people must forget what it feels like. So, like, you know, I'll be sick and then they just don't care. Pretty much you have to have your own back out here. You can't, you can't rely on anybody else. You can't, um, yeah, you just really, you really can't rely on anybody else to take care of you. You know, and, and it's not anybody's problem to take care of you. You got yourself your drug addiction. You need to take care of it yourself. You know, we should all help each other out here and there. Um, but at the end of the day, if you can't support your own habit, then you need to get help, you know? Because, uh-huh. you know, everybody else can't be your mom or take care of you all the time. Right. You know, but you basically, um, yeah, no, I get up and um, sometimes, it depends what day it is, sometimes they have breakfast um, Monday and Friday at Sarnelli House at 10, um, so I'll get breakfast there or I'll go to Prevention Point and get coffee. Um, if not over there getting breakfast, then I'll go to probably St. Francis or I'll go to Wawa and steal breakfast. That's what I did today. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, buddy. Um, but yeah, so, um, or I'll go to Wawa. So I went to Wawa today. You were hungry, then, Hunter. Still, you was hungry. And you know, you, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry so you had I, to do that. I, right. I don't, so I I do boost here and there. <clears throat> I'm not going to lie. And boosting is, is, isn't is right. You know what I mean? Even though it's a company, it's not right because somebody owns a company. But... I think if you're stealing and you're homeless and you're hungry and you're stealing, you know, a drink and something to eat, it's not the end of the fucking world. You're stealing to eat to survive. You're, you know right. what I mean? And it's crazy because I've, you know, been in Wawa and the one time I tried to take a Reese cup and um, an ice cream sandwich, two things, it's like $5. And the police officer at the door literally ripped me up, dumped my bag all over the ground, straight, you know, my, my used works and everything. Train, this, this um, truck, that's a train. Train. <laughs> right. That's a, that's a new train. A train. <laughs> so what's your, there watching. <laughs> what's your living status right now? Um, I'm homeless. Damn, um, that's tough. What is it like being homeless? It sucks and it's starting to get really cold. Um, every other year that I've been out here, um, in the winter, I 
I have been able, I have been lucky to where I've had a friend to stay with in their apartment. Uh, <clears throat> it really sucks. Um, the summer is not as bad, obviously, as the winter. Um, and every other year I've been fortunate where I could um, stay with um, two different friends I was staying with. Um, but unfortunately, within the past year, they both have passed away. Um, so, I haven't been into any shelters <coughs> since I've been homeless out here. Why I'm not? Trying to pass real quick. Right, right. Um, so, if I do, I, if I do get in the shelter, I want to get into. Um, I forget what it's called, the one right next to Huntington Beacon State. House? Beacon House, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, just because it's right there, um, it also doesn't have any um, uh, curfew. They have washers and dryers and actual beds and, you know, storage things that lock. Plus, you know, I'm familiar with the area. Um, but yeah, I haven't been in any shelters. I did try to apply for the Beacon House. Mm -hmm. I went to the pad program place on F and Allegheny. And she said she put an application in for me. I'm not sure if she actually did, though. I haven't heard anything. But um, they ended up saying that the um, there's a woman shelter that uh, has openings, whatever. They drove me there. It didn't work out. Needless to say, um, I did not stay there. Um, mainly because there's too many women. Um, the the curfew thing is big too because me being an addict, and especially I make most of my money at night, um, I would have to have enough money, make sure I make enough money to get enough drugs to get back over there I think it was around 46th Street or something like that um, get back down there you know by such and such time and um, yeah it was just not going to work out um, so I do I really do need to get into the Beacon House and I'm not sure really even how to go about it I had I know a couple friends that are in there and I keep talking to them but you know people, I guess, you know, people forget, and it's not, if it's not about them, then it's not, it's, it's not, not a priority, huh? yeah, it's not their first priority, you know, unless they're benefiting, mm. <laughs> that's really how it is out here. Right, heard that, I forgot to ask you this question, now you're out here, you're struggling, you have, you know, a habit that's life-threatening, and you know a lot of people are dying because of it and you have lost you know people that you love due to right. this addiction do you think about getting clean yeah honestly i would love to be clean like i was clean for those three years and it was just like such a relief to not have to wake up and use something to get through the day i had a really good job um, life was just happier, less stress. Like, it's funny because we'll use drugs to kind of escape the stress of our lives, but it makes our lives more stressful because now we have to run around, we're homeless, we're dirty, uh, you know, we'll try to get money and to try to not get arrested at the same time try to stay well it's like it, it makes things more fucking stressful yeah your mom played tricks on you right yeah drugs so don't I, love you at all i i really want to be clean i'm just really i'm terrified to go through the detox but you know you have to go through it in order to hell right i know i know they have mobile spots that's willing to take you they have few places willing to take you when you are ready when do you think you'll be ready I'm, I'm gonna, I don't know. I know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm pretty much there. You know what I mean? Like I said, What's, I'm just, uh -huh. like, I'm, I'm scared of the detox and I just wanna know pretty much what um, the place uses 
in order to detox you. I don't want to go somewhere and, and be suffering. You know what I mean? I want to be able to... I, I know it's not going to be easy, but I want to be able to at least comfortably detox. Right, right. And if I can find somewhere that can comfortably detox me mm -hmm. with the right medications, I would do it in a heartbeat. Got you, got you. Well, hopefully somebody reach out. Yeah. All right, yeah, I really appreciate you. We about to wrap things up. So let's get off topic just to get to know you as a person, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, um. What's your zodiac sign? I'm a Virgo. Yo, shout out to all the Virgos. Show your sign some love. What are your short-term goals then? Um, so hopefully, like I just said, getting into a shelter, or I need to get into some kind of some kind of sheltered area, um, or get a tent or something, um, because it's gonna be starting to get really cold. Facts. Um, and that shit sucks. All right. <laughs> Do you have a favorite band or artist you like? Um, no, I don't know. I yeah. like all kinds of music. Yeah, well, dear, I got some stuff for you. You can Thank go, you. you can take as many as you want. Okay. You, yeah, take as many as you want so I can, you know, bless mm -hmm. some other people with it. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I, I wish you all the best out here. You know, you're a very nice woman and I pray you can fight for your life back if we could do it for you we would but we can't that's the suck part yeah. we can just support you you yeah. know so pray that you realize your worth dear that you are worth it you know yeah. how much you used to weigh before um i mean i've always been small but um i've been at least like 100 105 i don't i can't don't even know what i weigh right now but i know it's not enough oh um all right right it's not easy but yeah i i mean i try to eat i try, I try to you know so mm -hmm. my addiction you know right. some people don't they just they don't even think about that at all got you but, there are a lot of people in this world who judge people who are struggling with addiction what's your message for the world um i guess just, uh, I don't know, just don't give up and and if, you know, someone's trying to reach out and help you to, you know, reach your hand back and accept their help, you know, I, that's what I struggle with doing too. I need to tell myself to do that. You know, I, I feel like I don't want to burden somebody, you know, that, that offers to help me. But if they're offering to help you, then, you know, it's not a burden to them you know they really genuinely care and as much as you don't think anybody cares about you you know s someone does someone somewhere does care to help you you know and you just gotta want the help you gotta exactly, push yourself yeah. you yeah, have the football you have to want it for yourself yeah. you know you can't go and get clean for somebody else you you know the the courts and what not they can put you into jail they can put you into rehab but as soon as you get out you're going to use it again Facts. because you're not ready right, unless right. you're 100 percent ready and you want that then you, you're not you're not gonna you know stay clean you, you gotta do it for yourself and yeah. you know that's what i need to do i need to do it for myself for my son as well you know my family they're all second but i need it for me yes you know and when I'm ready, I need... Well, I hopefully need. you'll be ready soon, dear. Yeah. All right? Need, yeah. So we about to shut down. AML family, I want to tell the lovely Allie, thank you so much for being courageous and helping save the future generation. You know, she's amazing. We wish her all the best and we pray for her to break free from her demons. She's now connected with the AML family, so we will be praying for you constantly and we will be here to support you when you are ready, all right? Thank is you. there, you're welcome. Is there anything you're in need of we can help you with? No. Not right now? No, no. Okay, guys. So you have taken some of these yeah, things for yourself? So yeah, here. take some of them for yourself. All right, thank you. Yeah, you, no doubt. We'll keep you in our prayers out here, girl. Thank no you. joke. Bad lines are serious. 
Yeah, take as many as you need. 